Hello everybody! Welcome back to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making hot mess canvases. If you haven't heard of these, they've been taking the internet by storm the past year or so. Basically, it's a reverse stencil where the base layer is a crazy mishmash of colors, hence a hot mess, right? So here's an example of a hot mess canvas. It's fun and eye-catching, don't you think? So to make one of these hot mess projects yourself, you're going to need a canvas. Now it doesn't have to be a framed canvas like this one. But that's what I'm making for my project. Um, and you're also going to need some vinyl and some transfer tape. Now I'm using Oracle 651, but you could also use Aura Mask. You need some brushes. And of course, you're going to need a design. I made two designs. One is a Christmas tree, because it's the holidays right now. And the other is a creative one for my craft room. Both these designs are free on my jennifermaker.com blog for you to use. Oh, and I can't forget the most important part of a hot mess canvas, the paint. So let me show you my paint. So this is my paint storage flower where I keep all of my craft and acrylic paints. There's a tutorial for this on my blog. No surprise there, right? So I think I'm going to want to use some greens for my Christmas tree canvas. You want a bunch of different you don't want like all the same color. The idea is to get some different colors going. So I'm going to use some greens and some blues. And then for my create everyday one, I think I'm going to use some pinks and some more teals. Now, one of the more, more what we're going to put over all of these colors, of course, is white paint. And so I'm going to use a different, um, couple different ones because I'm going to do two tonight and I want to experiment with them and see how they compare. Because one of the biggest things I hear about these, um, about doing hot mess canvases is that the paint doesn't seem to, you know, like look as good as they want or it bleeds or whatever. So we're going to try two different paints and we're going to see how they compare. And because, because I'm expecting some issues here, I'll be honest, we're just going to start with the wine right now. <laughs> so let's do this, shall we? All right. All right, so you don't have to do anything special other than just start painting. I didn't prime this canvas with white or something. I just got out my acrylic paints and started painting crazy colors all over the place. And you'll notice I'm not even like worrying about whether the colors are smearing or touching or whether, or even cleaning my brush in between the paint applications because I just didn't care. The, there's not really any rules here. You can do whatever you want. I think that you just want to keep it so that the paint is fairly flat so that when your vinyl is placed on it it's not too bumpy and then you know allowing extra paint to get underneath okay so here is our design that I cut out on my Cricut and we need to remove all of the excess uh, vinyl right so we're going to weed this uh, so we just start by taking out the extra that's around the edges and this was tricky. I don't know. I'm using Oracle 651 and I did that on purpose because it's a very sticky vinyl and I want it to really, really stick well to my canvas so that the paint would be less likely to want to, um, you know, sleep underneath. But that made it a little harder to get off of the backing as well. So now that we've got the outside off, we need to get the little bar bits inside. So I'm using my bright pad. Um, you, you can use any kind of light box or, or none at all. <laughs> but I have this, so I'm using it. And it does help me see the lines where it, uh, the bits are that I need to remove. And don't forget to get the parts on the inside of the letters too. And always you know, double check it before you put your transfer sheet on, right? Just in case you missed a little bit or something. Um, but once you have it, you can transfer sheet, just apply it starting from one corner outward and so there's no bumps. And then you want to burnish everything so it's nice and, you know, pressed flat to that transfer sheet. And then we peel off the backing. And this is where it got like, this is the hardest part of the project. Like this Oracle just is really sticky and it wanted to stay on the backing sheet, not transfer to the transfer sheet. Now, last time I did a vinyl project, I was using a different kind of transfer sheet. I was using um, a sizer uh, application transfer sheet, which is like a flat rather than this rolled um, kind, the Cricut kind. And that worked better for this kind of vinyl, right? Um, just, it still worked. I did it. It just took a little patience. <laughs> 
All right, so now it's time to put it onto our canvas. You gotta make sure it's dry, right? I gave this a good 12 hours before I applied it, um, my vinyl on here. Um, so just make sure it's dry. It's very important because if it's not, your your paint will come off. So and then burnish everything down, press it down. You want it to stick to that vinyl as good as you can. It's you because if it doesn't stick well, um, and you can see here that I'm already having a problem. It's not wanting to stick for some reason. I don't know why. Um, that see the T there. It's the top of the T is coming off. Anyways. Um, but if it's not stuck really well on your canvas, this, the paint will want to get underneath, right? Um, I have no explanation as to why it's not sticking well. It was totally dry and I rubbed it down really well. I burnished it down. Um, in fact, I even like uh, pressed it down with my fingers here just like this. And then I even got went and got my scraper um, to make sure. Now, you know, when you have these framed canvases like that, you w definitely want to turn it over to burnish it, right? So that you got a nice flat surface, right? So here I'm, I am like scraping that down <laughs> and it feels pretty good at this point. So for this one, we're going to use the Apple Barrel white paint. I think it's like snowflake white. And this is, of course is a stencil, right? So this is basically a reverse stencil and that's important to understand. Even though people call this a hot mess canvas, it's a reverse stencil on an unusual background. And now I'm, for this one, I'm going to use my foam brush and I'm using just the very tip of the foam brush and I'm just dabbing it, just a little bit of, just a little thin coat of paint because I really want it to not seep underneath, right? This is really important. So I'm just dabbing around and this video sped up. Of course, this took quite a bit longer than it shows here, but I'm just putting a tiny bit of paint on the edge of my brush, just really on the corner dabbing it and I'm going to do an experiment here I'm going to do half of the canvas with my foam brush and then we're going to switch to another brush to see if there's any kind of a difference in the brushes um, but you want to be careful you know if you put too much paint on that's that's when you're going to get um, the paint seeping underneath your canvas and that's the big problem with doing something like this um, so you whatever we can do to minimize that we want to so let's try using um, my other brush Right, so my, I have a stencil brush. And this is a stencil, so hey, let's use a stencil brush, right? And the stencil brush has short, um, really stiff bristles, just like that. So, um, and you just, you know, you're kind of just pouncing it down, straight up and down. Not just, not just similar from how you do the, the foam brush, right? So that the paint is just going right onto where it needs to go and not like sliding underneath. Or that's the theory. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work. And again, you want to use just a little bit of paint. Don't go crazy because if you have too much paint, it's going to need a place to go. It might want to go underneath your layers of vinyl. Um, yeah, so and already you can see that there's a difference between the stencil brush and the foam brush. I mean, the stencil brush is doing a better job of covering and, you know, really getting the paint into the canvas. And um, it's going to be a problem because I'm going to have one half of my canvas looking amazing and the other half looking not so great. So we'll have to address that. <laughs> but um, I can tell you right now, just from just the way that it's applying, that you're going to want to use a stencil brush if you can uh, get a hold of one. And they're not expensive. You can find them at the craft stores. Just, you know, you might have to, they might not be in the, you know, the section that you're used to, but they definitely have them and they're not expensive. Um, and then, so, you know, once you've got the edges of your vinyl done, you want to do the rest of it as well so that you're getting paint everywhere. Now, how much coverage you have really is up to your personal preference. Some people like to be able to see, you know, it to be a little rough, right? So that you can see the undercoat just ever so slightly. It gives it a, you know, um, shabby cheek look, right? Shabby chic. <laughs> saying that right. Um, other people want that to be totally pristine white, right? And if you do, if that's what you want, you're probably going to want two coats of this white, or you're going to want to use a paint that has a primer in it, right? Um, I'm just using regular little white apple barrel craft paint here. Nothing special. This is probably 50 cents for that bottle of paint. Okay. So now once it's dry, you have to, it's got to be dry. I think that I waited four to five hours before mine was dry. But once it's dry, then you can start removing the vinyl. And use your weeding tool because it's really going to help you get that little, those, because the paint want, makes it want to, you know, really stick down to your canvas. 
um, and then just take it off, you know, carefully. And as you can see here, you can see already that there's a difference in the two sides. The side that I use the stencil brush on looks a whole lot sharper than this side that I use the foam brush on. It's interesting, huh? So take a look at that. So this is the stencil side, it's nice and sharp, right? Looks good, huh? Whereas the foam brush side, definitely some seepage there, right? So if you can use a stencil brush, or maybe not use this paint, because I'm not so sure this paint is gonna work. Yeah, all right, so let's do the other one. Let's, let's give the other one a try. This time we're gonna use a different paint and see if it makes a difference. So again, you just want to put green paint all over your, or whatever color paint you're gonna use, right? I'm putting green paint all over my canvas. Again, I'm not washing out my brush in between. I'm just going nuts, putting patches of color all over the place just like this. You can do whatever you wanna do. That's the cool thing about it, right? You can just, just go to town, have fun, get crazy with color. Okay, and here is the design. And again, I didn't really wanna come off so well. <laughs> again, these designs are on my blog. You're welcome to use them. I'm gonna use some glasses for this because uh, these letters are tiny. And then uh, I'm just gonna use my weeding tool and I'm just gonna weed this design. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I have sped up this video. But it took me 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> it took me 20 minutes to weed this. I, I'm not a big fan of weeding. Um, I, <laughs> I know some people love it. I am just not one of those people. Um, and you can see that little pile of little letters like growing on my hand there. That's one of my, that's, that's a good tip, right? Is, and I'm, I said this in another, another video, but when you're removing bits of can, uh, vinyl, from a project, make sure you know where they're going and they're not just floating around your work area and because they will find the, your wet, their way back into your design under something or on top of something that you don't notice until it's too late and what a pain in the butt that is, right? So just stick them on your hand or find a piece of paper and put them all there so that everything is consolidated and you know what where everything is going, right? And, uh, yeah, have some patience with this. <laughs> uh, a glass of wine is a great thing to have while you're weeding, I would say. <laughs> Having this bright pad or any kind of light box like this is really helpful because um, the white sheet, I think the white sheet is the hardest to weed. And so probably I should have used a different color, but white is what I had of the Oracle 651. And again, that's what I recommend, or even better actually, um, you have to special order it, but if you can get Aura Mask, um, that is actually Oracle stenciling material it's made for stenciling. So uh, if you can get that, that's even better, but you do, can't usually find that in a craft store and you know, you'll, so you'll have to special order it. But there we go. Just make sure you got everything weeded. Take a drink of wine, <laughs> remove all the letters from your hand, and then it's gonna be time for us to put our transfer material onto our design and get this baby onto the canvas so we can try out a different paint to see if there's a difference. Uh, remember when you put um, transfer sheets on, start at the corner and move outward so that you minimize creases and bubbles. Burnish that down and then uh, take it off. It's gonna to wanna to stick to the backing again. Um, not fun. <laughs> Maybe you, know, you might be tempted. Oh, it's not sticking well to this, you know, this Cricut uh, standard grip transfer sheet. Let's go get the strong grip. Do not do that. I made that mistake when I was very new to Cricut. That strong grip is very, very strong. And it will, won't, will, won't, won't want to come off onto your project. I mean, it'll transfer off of your backing. Great. But it won't actually then come off onto your project. So just be patient. Use your weeding tool to get all the little bits off and it'll be fine. Double check it once more, if it looks good. Put it onto your dried canvas. Make sure that you give that time to dry. Burnish it down on the front and the back. Make sure that's, that vinyl is really um, well adhered and then carefully pull it off. That's really pretty. It's almost nice just like that, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> but no, we're gonna paint this and we're gonna make it into a hot mess canvas. <laughs> All right, so again, we're just, just a dab of paint, and this time I'm using a different paint. Before I was using Apple Barrel. This time I'm using Martha Stewart Multi-Surface, Multi-Surface paint. Um, it's a little thicker, and I thought that maybe that might improve things. I guess we'll see, right? Um, 
But yeah, we're just dabbing the the tip of the foam brush around the edges of the vinyl. You just need to just just a little bit of paint and just enough to cover it, right? Because you got too much paint and it's gonna, it's gonna go everywhere and it's not gonna look pretty when you're done. Unless you don't mind, they're being paint everywhere because I mean, this is a hot mess canvas after all. This is not, I mean, the very name means it's not perfect, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> it, yeah, so just patiently put that paint around the edges, just dabbing it. And you know, when you do have to brush, um, because sometimes you just accidentally have a little bit too much paint and you need to remove it, be sure to brush from the surface outward away from the edge right so that the paint is move flowing away from the stencil rather than toward it where it might want to push itself up underneath the vinyl and then uh, cover the entire canvas with white paint it's always kind of weird to do this like oh why am i covering the whole thing here um it looks really weird and in this case case that you know i'm putting white over green and that's a pretty dark green and you can see it really well so I went back through and I I, re, I put another layer on where the I was kind of like conscious about where my brush strokes were. So it sort of looked like um, it was all kind of moving outwards from the tree, you know, like, boom, here's the tree. Woo, right? Um, you know, so and, and especially since this paint is thicker and, um, you know, you can really see the brush strokes a lot better than maybe that thinner paint that I was using before the apple barrel. Okay. There we go, that's what it looks like. Let's give it some time to dry. And when it's dry, I and I waited, um, I waited about six hours, I think, for this to dry. And then you, you peel off your vinyl. I always feel a little nervous about this part. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be horrible, but you know, it never really is horrible. It really isn't. I think that we make just way too big of, of a deal out of things being perfect. Nothing I make is ever perfect, ever, ever, guys. I think there's some misconception out there about that. Um, I, I believe firmly in progress over perfection. And you, I could show you flaws in everything I do, but I don't because there's no point. I'm just, I admire the beauty of what I've made rather than obsess over the faults of it. And I highly recommend you do the same thing. All right. So uh, make sure you get all the little bits out from the letters. I know there's a name for those, but I can't remember what they, it is right now, but I do know I have used it before. I just can't recall, uh, but you get them all out. That weeding tool works really great for it. Um, yeah, almost there. And actually I can see already that there's a huge difference between the previous paint and this paint. In fact, I'm seeing virtually no mistakes, no seepage underneath, super clear and sharp edges. And yeah, this looks really good. Let's take a closer look at this after have our drink of wine because we deserve that. <laughs> so yeah, look at how pretty this turned out. Look at those lovely sharp lines. So paint, the winner here, the paint winner is the Martha Stewart multi-surface uh, paint. And the brush winner is a stenciling brush. So if you can use those two things, I think that you'll um, end up with a better hot mess canvas. Well guys, I gotta say, I think they're really called the hot mess canvases because you kind of feel like a hot mess while you're making them. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. The base painting was fun, it felt a little crazy, but the weeding and the sticking the vinyl to the canvas, that was a challenge. And it sure seems like both the type of paint that you use and the brush makes a difference, right? So you're gonna need a little bit of patience with this, and of course, maybe a little bit more wine too. Still, they came out fine, and I think the Christmas tree one is my favorite. Um, but what I love about these is that there's no vinyl left on these. It's just canvas and paint, and they're going to look awesome. I'm going to put this one in my entryway for the holidays, and this one is going to go up right here in my craft room. And I think these hot mess canvases would make great gifts, too. You could personalize them so easily. All right, so tomorrow we are making faux leather earrings in a variety of different styles. Now, I don't have pierced ears, but that just means I get to give them away as gifts, right? Now, if I haven't covered the project that you're just dying to try, please send me your project ideas for the Great Maker Show and Tell at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. And remember, 
If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.